Good morning, guys. Welcome back aboard La Vida Gypsy. We are up and at them and on our way to Mazatlan. We left earlier this morning from Matanchen where we explored some really cool ruins, and now we are heading up north. This trip should be about 130 nautical miles, which puts us at about a day's worth of sailing, as in like 24 hours. So we got up, picked up anchor, the weather is nice and beautiful as always, not a lot of wind, but it is due to pick up at some point this afternoon, so we are going to keep on moving forward. There is no greater feeling than starting your sail off with favorable weather conditions. The seas were calm, LVG was gracefully gliding through the Pacific, and the winds filled up our sails, propelling us forward. But not even the best sailing conditions were helping Kurt with his fishing skills. Better said, his skills on catching the right fish. More Jack Cravals. I, I don't know, we uh, keep catching the Jack Cravals when we get these schools of birds, so maybe they just, uh, the birds follow those, I don't know. So maybe we shouldn't follow the birds. But we're gonna get us something edible. I think it's one out of every 50 times you get something edible, and we're on like number 49 now, so. <laughs> any day, any day now. Whoa, we've got a pot of dolphins that are having a field day. They are having a ball. I don't know what they're doing. They're jumping like crazy out there. We're gonna see if we can't entice them to come our way. Usually these guys, once they see a boat, they love to come over and, and swim with us. So we'll see if we can get them to come. Here they come. Gosh, we are in the middle of them. They're everywhere. This is the most dolphins we have seen in one spotting. And they're big too. This is one of the few moments you will ever get me say on camera that I wish our bridge deck was a little bit lower. I want to touch them so bad. <laughs> We always joke around with Rigby that every day is the best day of her life. But today definitely took the crown for what seemed like miles. These playful creatures accompanied us, leaving everyone on board overwhelmed with emotion. heart attack, but a good heart attack. My heart is so full, it's about to explode. There's hundreds of dolphins behind us. Kurt saw them from like a mile away. And there's just so many, there's babies. They're all over our boat and they just, they've been following us for like 30 minutes already. And this is just incredible. This is amazing. They're making sure we're going the right way, huh? The thrill of being swarmed by dolphins resulted in excitement overload. Nonetheless, we were still very much enjoying our way up to Mazatlan. Around these parts, upwind sailing is usually the norm, but today we were lucky enough to get some smoother downwind action.
Wow, this was a beautiful day of sailing. This is, this is why we're out here. It was just so relaxing. Light breezes today, but we were always moving in the right direction. We got to see tons of dolphins today, which was a super cool treat. We caught lots of fish, although we didn't catch anything edible. We got, I don't know what we have to do to get an edible fish, but it it's still fun. Something. It's still yeah. fun to catch them, and it's so cute watching Rigby. Every time she hears that reel go, <laughs> she just pops up. She's like, you hear that reel, Dad? Yeah, go, you gotta knows. go check it out. So yeah, she loves it. She so. warned us one of the times we were actually inside the boat, and the reel went off, and she actually went inside and was like, guys, guys! <laughs> get it! <laughs> Get it. So, yeah, that was yeah cute. she's she's a lot of fun. Well, the reason we're heading up north is we are trying to get prepared for the hurricane season, and we wanted to talk to you for a minute about options that you have for a hurricane plan. This is our first hurricane season, and so it has got us on edge. We don't really know exactly what we're doing, but we've been doing a lot of research to try to prepare for it. And I wanted to go over some of the options that you have when you're coming up with a hurricane plan. There's three basic options you have for preparing for a hurricane. Option numero uno. Your first option, which is probably the best option, is to pull your boat out of the water and store it on the hard. Put it in the boat yard, strap it down tight to the concrete, and make sure that you're, you know, take everything down that's gonna catch wind and you know you're you're nice and dry there. You're out of the waves, you're out of the fetch, you're out of the storm surge. It's the best option. However, if you happen to be a live aboard like we are, if you happen to be cruising all the time if like we do. If you happen to have a YouTube channel where you need to bring entertainment to your people every week. Yeah, you can't really leave your <laughs> boat in the boat it, yard yeah. and go back to your house in, in the States because we don't even own a house uh, in the States. Yeah. We have nowhere to go. This is it. So that option really was off the table real quickly in our case. Option number two. Numero dos. Find yourself a good hurricane safe marina. The marinas are good if they have certain features. The features you want to look for are you want to look for floating docks, docks that are going to rise with you as the storm surge comes in. That way you and the docks go up and you can keep your lines nice and tight. However, you want to make sure that you have a marina with pilings that are taller than the anticipated <laughs> storm surge. it goes up, the boat goes up, and the dock goes up, away and you're gone. The <laughs> yes. So you look for things with tall pilings, floating docks. The problem with marinas is there's a lot of things in marinas to bash into and to crash into if things go bad. Yeah. It's concrete docks. There's docks that can come loose and, and crash into you. There's boats there's that can come boats. break free and crash into you. There's a lot of things there that can go wrong. So it kind of gave me an uneasy feeling. However, when we decided to explore that option, we found that that option wasn't even really an option for us anyways. We were because too late. Those hurricane marinas fill up fast. Yeah. We tried to, to reserve a spot months ago and they were already full. So it brings us to Opción numero tres. The last option there is out there is to find yourself a hurricane hole and to ride it out on anchor. These hurricane holes, they're, they're bays and harbors that are known for being protected, protected on all sides. And your best hurricane holes actually even have like little dog legs that dog leg into the, the actual bay or the harbor. And that keeps the waves and the fetch from the, all the wind that's pushing against the waves it keeps it out of that harbor so that you have it as smooth and as protected a, a place as you can possibly find. And once you find these hurricane holes, you drop your anchors, you take down all your sails, anything that's going to catch wind, and then you hold on for dear life. Yep, that's what we have planned for our first hurricane season. We hope that it works. Fingers. We hope we don't even see a hurricane, yeah, but, but we have to have a plan anyways. Yeah, so fingers crossed. us finally but we did pretty good today sun is going down crew is fed at least most of us are fed some of us are still being oh my goodness fed and uh, I am going to go to bed first and Kurt is doing the first night shift and 
per usual. If anything exciting happens, we'll let you guys know. Otherwise, we'll see you guys in the morning. our third option which was to anchor we decided that we wanted to go all the way up into the Sea of Cortez and find a hurricane hole right so once we find this hurricane hole what are we gonna do to prepare well the first thing you want to do is obviously get anything and everything that's gonna blow away and put it away so we're gonna take everything and store it in the salon then you want to reduce the windage on your boat which means reducing the, or removing all your sails our head sail our main sail the sail bag we're gonna even remove the bimini top one thing that we're not going to remove in our hurricane plan is our solar array. It is, it's low, it doesn't catch a lot of wind anyways, and it's extremely well secured. So oh, yeah. it would be quite a chore to remove that. So we're gonna leave it as is. Now that we're all secured and we've got our windage down, we comes to anchoring. And in our case, we have two very large oversized anchors for this boat with lots of road. So we're going to set those anchors and then we're gonna decide whether or not, based on the size of the storm or the, the conditions, whether to ride it out or go to shore. Well, we have paged several times with no luck, but we do see a boat that we have uh, anchored next to several times in many of these anchorages here. So we are just gonna drop anchor next to this guy and uh, see if we get in trouble. We'll just hang out here for a little bit and then see what's going on. It's the best we can do. Well, it's important to have plans, but it's also important to know that your plans can go awry. Things can go wrong. And that's kind of what happened to us today. We got here to Mazatlan, we made it. We're, our plan was to come into the harbor and to drop anchor in front of Club Nautico. You're supposed to call the club and get permission to do so, and they can tell you kind of where, where they want you to sit. But we couldn't get anybody on the radio. Linda called and called and called got radio silence it's so packed in here too so yeah, i don't yeah. even know if we're parked in the right spot if it's the safe spot there's traffic coming in and out but we dropped yeah. the, we dropped the anchor and we're going to sit here until somebody tells us we have to Ask move for forgiveness not permission <laughs> right so with our hurricane plans we know that there are things that can go wrong so we want to try to be prepared and at least try to identify those things that can go wrong before we get into a situation where where we're in a crisis one of those areas that can go wrong is your anchoring strategy. I mentioned that we have two large anchors on this boat, but you have to have a strategy on how you're gonna deploy those anchors. And there's a couple of different tr uh, schools of thought. One of them is to separate your anchors on like a 45 or a 90 degree angle and, and put them in a V formation. The problem with that is if the wind starts changing too much and you swing around too much, you could end up fouling those anchor chains with each other, and then it becomes a nightmare trying to get the anchors up. Another method, one that I think I prefer, is doing it in a daisy chain method, where you set an anchor and you have a secondary anchor that's further down the road uh, from that, that primary anchor. There are opinions that say that that's not a real effective method, that when the boat starts pulling, that that second anchor can actually put too much of an upward lift on the primary anchor and unseat it. I don't know if that's the case or not, but this is the method that I think I'm gonna be more, most comfortable with once we get into the anchorage. Another thing that we have to worry about is whether or not there's gonna be room for us in these hurricane holes. There's several hurricane holes in the Sea of Cortez, and depending on where we are, these hurricane holes are, can, can handle a certain number of boats. Some of them only handle 30 boats. Some of them can handle 70 boats. What if we go to a hurricane hole where it only handles 30 boats and we get there and it's full? Yeah. Then what do we do? Just like here, this harbor <laughs> yes. is full and uh, we don't have a plan B if this place was full. So it's very possible that that could happen. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what the what the strategy is if we get there and it is full because the, the second hurricane hole is far away. So that's something that 
keeps us up at night, concerns us a bit. Do we have to just sit in the hurricane hole all summer long so that we reserve our spot? I'm not sure. So these are things that you know we're thinking about we're trying to resolve these problems before they actually become problems so guys if you've got any advice if you have any suggestions please leave us comments below yeah not just on this episode but like this is a situation where this is we're in a season now right so and for the next five months it's a hurricane season so any episode that you guys watch any social media platform that you guys follow us instagram facebook youtube whatever it is we are all ears if you guys are cruisers out there let us know shoot us an email and and we are definitely willing to listen to everything that you throw our way <laughs> and now we have to go prepare ourselves for the actual crossing of the sea of cortez and guys this is it for real this time. I know we're like, see you Cortez, see you Cortez, see you Cortez, but like legit, like this is the stop before we cross to La Paz and, and that's it. And then we are literally for real in the Sea of, of Cortez. So we're gonna go provision the boat. We gotta go fuel up. We need some beers, we need some snacks, and we actually need to get the boat ready because we've got crew who are coming to help us make that passage too. So thank you so much for watching this episode. Be sure that you guys hit like, be sure that you guys smash that subscribe button. And if you haven't had a chance to, go on down in the description and check out our patron. Other than that, we're gonna take a nap because we did a night sale and I'm running on fumes. See you guys next week. See ya.